Hey guys, it's Captain Seth and your Uncle Paul back again for Everything Money. We did a video just a few weeks ago on Workhorse, the EV truck company out of Cincinnati, Ohio. We're in, Paul and I are both incredible Ohio fans, and uh, I'm definitely rooting for this company. But we're not, uh, we were not big fans of investing in what might seem to be overpriced, overvaluated companies that... Um, that are looking to grow. This is a type of a growth stock. There's been a lot of news going on with Workhorse. We are doing another video. People keep asking us for an update. We're here to give it. Obviously, new numbers have come out, have come out uh, uh, in terms of revenue. Um, and there's interesting news with Workhorse, Paul. As I said, President Biden has committed that, that they, they want... They want Workhorse to make 650,000 vehicles, or at least President Biden wants the 650,000 vehicles um, to be EVs, their U.S. government fleet. From um, Workhorse? Uh, no, he just he just said that. And I think so the Workhorse would be a part of it. Go ahead, Paul. Let's get right into that. Please do. If you're the President of the United States and you have the big three autos yes. who have amazing lobbying power, are you going to be buying from a small company in Ohio? That has no track record. Well, perhaps. Pers uh, s you know, since that, other news has said that this Pride Group, Pride Group is a retail rental truck company in the United States and Canada. They have since ordered sixty three hundred vans. Sixty three hundred. For uh, from sixty three hundred. Sixty. Hold on a second, Paul. Before wow. you before you before you wet your pants there. 60, Just like four. Hold on a second. This is huge news because they're going to start in July, and this is over the next. Five years, Paul. They won sixty three hundred vehicles. So the back over five years, twelve hundred vehicles a year. No, no, no. Just yeah, that's right, Paul. That's right. Oh my lord! <laughs> Hold on a second. Stop the presses. <laughs> the backlog is currently Workhorse has a backlog of eight thousand vehicles. Eight thousand? <laughs> Can I tell you something? <laughs> Hold on a second. Dealership I worked at in Toledo Go sells on. fifteen thousand vehicles a year. One dealership. So when Workhorse gets an order for sixty three hundred vehicles over five years, I laugh. Paul, is you, it a start? It's absolutely a start. UPS is getting 950 vans this year, but I'll 950? tell you. 950? 950. So like three weeks at Yark Automotive Group in Toledo, Ohio. Three weeks. So the good news is, Paul, before you... <laughs> I have Don laughing at least. The reason we did this video is because Paul is very, not anti-growth, but understanding growth companies. And we got a lot of comments about you're wrong. We also got a lot of positive comments, Paul, on how we shouldn't listen to the haters. But again, I want I want <laughs> you to hear, if you believe in this and want to dump your hard-earned money in this, you should probably hear the other side of the coin. Paul, this company, by the end of this quarter, is their goal is to produce five vehicles a day. Five vehicles per yes. day. No, I don't know if they're building them with Legos. Guys, I don't know I, if they're building them with Legos. Why aren't they? Because a I'll tell you why. Billion Paul. dollar company then. So Five vehicles a day. This is a four point seven billion dollar company. Four point. Our no, video came no, it's out. Not, not anymore. Remember, because it's, uh, oh, yeah, it's right. down twelve percent today. Okay. So on January eighteenth, <laughs> we made a video. The price was twenty four dollars. It's now thirty four. But when I did my notes as of last night, it was thirty nine. So in in your opinion, our opinion in that video. Again, we were told. People love to tell Paul that he's wrong, but his opinion was, I'm avoiding this company at the moment, okay? And so um, other people said, Paul, I'm so glad I didn't listen to your advice from the last video. I just made 18K last week on Workhorse. Yep. He said, this is an old way, of, you have an old way of thinking. This is not 2021, I'm sorry, this is not 1998, Paul. This is 2021. So um, I'd and love to hear your updated thoughts on Workhorse. And guess what, in 1998, we heard this isn't 1975 anymore, it's 1980. And guess what? It was exactly the same outcome. Guys, when that person says that they didn't, they didn't listen to me, they're glad they didn't listen to me, but 18,000, even if somebody, it's just that they made money off of momentum, not off fundamentals. I'm trying to teach on most episodes fundamentals. We have our friend Trader Mo, he talks about the charts. We also have in our Patreon group a group starting for momentum trading. That's a totally different thing. I am purely talking about fundamentals here. So all of you people out there who get all butt hurt about the fact that the stock keeps going up, I do everything based on fundamentals. I am being funny when I talk about 6,300 vehicles, 6,300 vehicles over five over years. Over five years. That is 1,225 vehicles a year. That's right, Paul. Guys, if this is exciting to you to value a company at $4.2 billion, I will start a car company tomorrow because I can make 100, 1,225 cars a year. I can do that all day. That's 100 cars a month, three a day. Their goal is five a day. That's right. Guys, five a day? Seriously? 
Come on, give me a break. This is a joke. Like, listen, I get it. Workhorse is a lot of momentum and excitement right now, and you can make money trading it. But I talk about a fundamental long-term approach to looking at companies. This fundamental approach that we're trying to teach, Paul, it, it, you know, and if you're watching, is we want you to understand the process of looking at a, comp at a company through fundamentals so that you don't make a mistake potentially on one of these. Because if, if the title of this video was Nikola and they don't get this government contract, then this money can go right down the toilet. Am I wrong, Paul? And that's the thing, guys. These are all hypotheticals. We're trying to give Tiger Woods the 19 majors as beating Jack Nicholas before he actually does it. Let's let this company perform before you give them a $5 billion valuation. Let's go let them go make $250 million in a year before you give them a five. Now, growth is a big aspect of value investing and it's a big aspect of fundamentals. But if a company is gonna be worth $5 billion at some point, it better be growing like crazy to even justify a price that could sit there and say, you know what, if I pay this today, what you're doing here though is, with, with Workhorse, you're paying them today for what they're gonna be worth five years from now, even factoring in all the growth you're talking about here. Yeah, That's what I'm talking about when it comes to fundamentals. You can disagree with me all you want about that, but it's 100% fact. Growth is a part of value investing, growth is a part of fundamentals. But if you have a company that's gonna generate one, two, three, four, all the way up, are you willing to pay 10,000 for it? The answer is no. Are you willing to pay one for it? The answer is yes. Are you willing to pay 10 for it? It's gonna keep growing forever? Probably. But what you're doing is, you're paying 10,000 for this. That's where I have a problem. To make it even simpler, if you're only gonna have a company for four years make that much money, that's $10, what do you want to pay? $10? No, because you're gonna break even. Are you willing to pay five? Yeah, probably. My whole point is growth is very, very important in every company out there. But just because a company is growing doesn't mean you pay whatever it takes. And just because a company is not growing or, or, or declining in size doesn't mean you, it's worth zero. Mm -hmm. It's still, you have to analyze a return on investment and net present value, a discounted cash flow to sit there and say, what am I willing to pay? If you don't agree with me, please come to me right now. I just bought a beautiful home. Please buy it for me based on the value it's going to be worth in 100 years because that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It'll be worth X in 100 years, so therefore pay it for me today. That's what everybody does when they say, look at the future. That's what you're saying. You're saying, I bought my house for 100, my house is going to be worth 300,000 in, in 30 years, so pay me 300,000 today for it. And if you don't get this analogy, you need to take a step back, watch all of our videos, and learn, because that's exactly it. But if the house is only worth 100,000 today, I can go buy a similar house for 100K, why would I pay 300K? Because this 100K house will be, this other 100K house will be worth 300,000 in 30 years. It's no different, guys. Let, let factor in the growth, but don't sit there and say, oh, it's growing. And by the way, guys, it's not just you. I've met literally people worth hundreds of millions and billions of dollars who think the exact same way, and they are wrong. And unfortunately, we hear somebody has that much money. The biggest insult I get is, this guy's rich. He obviously knows what he's talking about. No, that's not what it means. I know plenty of rich people who are morons. Plenty of them. It's about understanding fundamentals and understanding what is a dollar in 10 years or X number of years worth to me today. That's all investing is. It's a discount of all the future cash flow. But when you pay 4.7 billion for a company, that has, what does that have to make to justify that price today? It's gotta make billions and billions of dollars. It's not making that today. So you have to assume all these great things can happen for it to be worth what you're paying for it today. So when all those great things happen, your price shouldn't go up then because you already paid for that today. Your price will stay the same. So you're overpaying today for all the future potential. That's where it's fundamentally flawed. We talk about this all the time and it, it, it's a well-known saying that you want to buy low and sell high, except as Paul always talks about when it comes to real estate and hype stocks is people love buying high. So Paul, it's funny is that this company is worth $4.7 billion. Actually, Again, it's dropped down to 4.2, yeah, and they're struggling to make four cars a day. Yep. Um, it, so again, uh, in terms of trading, trading my... momentum, more power to you. Look at the charts. Trader Mo will talk about it. But in terms of fundamentals, there'll be a better time to buy. For somebody who says it's not 1998 anymore, I wish you were around in 1998 because everybody in 1998 said it's not 1975 anymore. Okay. It's that all you're saying there is different this time. I want everybody to go on Google right now and type in 
the four worst words in investments, and it's, it's different this time, because it's never, ever different, ever. At the end of the day, long-term, cash flow, revenue, profit, those things all matter. Um, if you like what you're hearing, and if you've made it this far, and haven't clicked off the video, um, I, I have not seen a lot of YouTube videos with this take on Workhorse. Most of them are just kissing their butt and telling them how wonderful they're going to be and how exciting all this is. The EV market is exciting. Absolutely exciting. It's great. And guess what? Another comment? So were airplanes and cars 100 years ago. And guess what? Go look at the history of how many aerpl- airlines and how many car manufacturers went out of business. Airline, is, airline traffic has grown how many times in the last 40 years? How many airlines have gone under in the last 40? If you use the same logic that, oh, EV is the future, that means every company will go out. No, go look at the history of, of airlines and car manufacturers and internet companies in the 90s. They, they'd still go out of business. Amazon had a high of $107 a share, and it was the one of the few that made it. $107 a share. Now it's $3,100, right, or so. But guess what? It fell to six. It still fell 94% before it went back up. You might sit there and say, yeah, but it went back up. This is the only example I can remember. I'm not saying it's the only example out there. It's the only example I can remember. You look at all the other big companies like Cisco, Intel, HP, they're still below their their high from 2000. 21 years later, they're still below their highs. Amazon's the only one that made it. So you'd invested in 100 companies hoping to find Amazon. You'd be like, look, I found Amazon, but you lost your money on 99 of them. So you made... 31, you made 31 times your money here and lost a big chunk of your, if not all your money on 99 of them. You still end up losing money. If you've come this far and you want to join our Patreon, we talk about this extensively with our followers, people who think this way and uh, maybe think co- this way. question, walk this way? Yeah, bicep. Yeah. <laughs> they might be questioning the norm that's out there. It's sort of sort of a lonely road. We will get comments. Look below about how wrong we are. Except um, my, my thought process as a normal person is I'm following someone who actually has done this and has an enormous amount of money, property, assets, and businesses Remember, flowing matter. and running right now. Of course. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters I'm, in a certain sense. But your all- opinion definitely counts more to me than someone sitting in their basement talking about how See, great. See, I'm a big believer is. in process. You know what I mean? Sure. So if your process is fundamentally sound and it's good, I don't care how much money you have. Like one of the, the best investor I ever, the best, best, the best investor I know doesn't have as much money as me, yeah. but he's a better investor than me. I see. You know what I mean? Like I look at it going, well, wait a second. He's, he, he has less money than me, but he's a way better investor. There's going to be people in our Patreon group who are better investors than me. Yeah. I see it already. They're already, <laughs> they're already better than me, Paul. So. I mean, they're very, very thorough. I'm, my goal isn't to be the best investor out there. My goal is to be just a sound investor. It doesn't take much to beat the market. As long as you fight these emotional highs and lows. Yeah. Investing, the hardest part is the discipline of it. That's exactly it. Now, we always use Y charts in all of our companies. And over the years, over the year, people have asked us, where do you get this information? Part of our Patreon, if you join our Patreon, there is 12, 49, and $250 levels. Any level you join, you get our version of Y charts, which gives you everything that Y charts has from the fundamental financial side right here. It gives you your eight pillars. Here are the eight pillars right here. Or you can look at the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. Boom, just like this. You will get this for free on April 15th when it's all done. This software is awesome. I'm using it. It's going to be great. It's going to get better because I'm going to add more and more components, a real estate calculator, retirement calculator, and you're getting the Patreon community. Everybody in there is becoming friends. They ask questions. Somebody yesterday put in the general chat something about a car. They needed information on how to sell a car. Within literally a minute, they got 13 responses or something crazy like that. It's amazing. So yeah. check the link below, the description below for the Patreon if you're interested. Um, I, I, we are it's growing trying- like crazy too. I mean, we, we ran out of 500. Our first 500 spots ran out in the last. We had 170 on, on January 1st. It's we crazy. have 698 today. It's crazy. Yeah, get get in now while while it's uh, cheaper than it will be in the future, and uh, you will join a community of disciplined investors that think like this and um, a lot of support. So if you feel lonely out there in your path of investing, um, you can, you got a lot of friends waiting for you on our Discord channel, and we welcome you in. If you if you if you uh, if you want and more learn. access to you and I, Absolutely. we do our fireside chat. We're gonna do a lot more private videos on companies as well as our lives, like you know, yeah, as you want to do it all the time. Yeah. All right, guys, that's our video on Workhorse. Um, sorry again. I, I, I've been brainwashed over the past few years talking to Paul about, <laughs> yes, this stock may very well go to the moon, but uh, I'd rather get into some boring company that's currently underpriced. And um, that'll go to the, that'll, that, a lot of boring companies together are going to go further than one company going to the moon. 
Warren yeah. Buffett didn't get rich off of buying a company that went up 100 times in five years. He didn't get rich that way. He got rich by making 5 or 10% above the market over long periods of time. Make sure you guys tickle that thumbs up as you always tickle Paul's belly. And if you don't like it, you can um, thumb your nose on the thumbs down. We'll take either one. But we love your support. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you on Patreon. Love you guys. Thanks. Boom. Oh.